Hi, this is Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today we're going to be building a small form factor PC. Enter the computer and a new age. Because this is a small form factor PC, we're actually going to be using something other than a standard power supply. We're going to be using what's called a Pico power supply, which you can get on Amazon. We actually have that linked below. Uh, we're also going to be using a APU rather than just a CPU or GPU. So the APU means that it is a CPU module with a graphics processor built into it. So that means that it does the main processing of the computer as well as graphics all on one chip. So it's perfect for small form factor builds like this. And we're using a B450 uh, motherboard, which is a mini ITX from Gigabyte. So this is a really good small form factor motherboard. It has Wi-Fi built into it. It has RGB, if that's something that you're looking for, and it supports M.2 and uh, NVMe boot drives, which is always awesome when you're building something small form factor and low power. And we're actually using this case that I found on Amazon. I believe it was a Goodisori or something to that effect brand. It's not like a real brand. It's kind of a Chinese import, but it was just under 50 bucks and it's made of solid aluminum and it's actually really good quality. And it comes with two USB sockets and a power button. We're actually linking this below as well along with the CPU and the motherboard. All right, so I've taken the motherboard out of the box and I realized that I actually missed describing something to you. I actually have already installed the RAM module and the hard drive in here. We're using an eight gigabyte G-Skill RAM module right here. And this is DDR4 RAM and we're using a Samsung SSD in the NVMe slot. So just to get started, we're gonna put the motherboard into the case and make sure everything fits up properly. Taking in the IO shield out of the box and we're gonna put that into the case as well at the same time. So I'm actually using my screwdriver kit from iFixit. Please sponsor us, iFixit. I love your stuff. So it's a great screwdriver kit if you are like me and you have a thousand one projects on the go and everything has a different screwdriver. So let me find the right driver head. Okay, so we just need a Phillips bit. And that's a little too big. Well, that's actually a pause drive. My bad. You can definitely tell I planned this well in advance and know exactly what I'm doing. I've actually built a few of these PCs before in the past with different cases and slightly different components. So I'm just setting the screws off to the side. super exciting stuff here. And the top is just a billet aluminum plate that you can just take off. So we're just gonna set that off to the side. There's a hard drive mount here that you can use for a spinning disc hard drive or a SSD, like a two and a half inch or three and a half inch. But I'm just gonna be removing that because I don't really need it for this build. And it's actually removable for the setup and installation as well. So nothing permanent here. I can always add it back in later. Just taking that out, taking out the screws that came with the case, setting those off to the side. And I'll take a look here, pull all these cables out of the way. So we've got some clear space and I'm going to put this IO shield in. And you just want to make sure you've got the correct orientation with that. So it's usually text facing up or whatever correct orientation relative to the motherboard. If you're using a different case, you might have different experience with that. But for us, 
this is the way that it goes. So this just pops in, and then once you've got this, you just take the motherboard here. Oh, it looks like I actually have to load it in this way because of the cables. And you want to be a little more careful than I am. Line everything up. Looks good. All looks well and good. And we are going to take these screws, take out the respective screws for mounting the motherboard in, which is the larger ones here. The rest are for mounting in hard drives and whatnot. Now, I know a lot of people are probably screaming at me right now about not using an anti-static surface, but wood is fairly good at not conducting static electricity, and it's a good insulator. And I'm not too worried. As long as you're respectful to your electronics, you shouldn't have to worry about electrostatic discharge or ESD in this day and age. So, I've almost got this fully installed. the last screw for that. I'm going to set the other ones off to the side in just a sec. There we go. All right. So as you can see there, got it all mounted in. And I'm going to plug in this USB header here. It just goes straight into the front of the case, or of the motherboard. Just do some cable management, tidy that all up. And I'm actually pretty impressed with the quality of this case. It was really cheap, given that it's solid aluminum, which most solid aluminum cases are going to be pretty expensive. Okay, so we're not using any of the peripherals on this power supply. We're just driving everything directly. So I'm going to set this out, plug in the power supply to the motherboard, just kind of rock it into place. It'll make a bit of a click when it goes in, and then we feed this which is just a DC jack. I'm going to feed that to the back of the case here and find the corresponding hole. And just use this nut here to hold it in place. All right, we can tighten that up in a bit, but for now, just kind of want to make sure that cables are all out of the way. Probably actually run it along this way we're not using the graphics card slot at all and there's nothing really on this side of the case. We're going to be putting the CPU in a little bit. I just like having everything in place before we get too far along with that. And I actually just noticed that I didn't connect the grounding lug here. So I'm just going to connect that to one of the internal screws here. You want to make sure that you get this grounding lug attached to your case. Otherwise, if something shorts out or if you're in an area where your power isn't clean, so to speak, then you could end up with a dead computer. Oops. Oops. <laughs> and the screw falls down into the case, and now I get to retrieve it using my trusty Leatherman, which I had just off site just for these reasons. All right, so let's do this again. Probably cut that out. I don't know. We'll leave that to Val. All right, and just tightening that in there. 
Ooh, okay, so that's in there. And now we just have the front I.O. to plug in. And actually, we're going to wait on that for a second, get the CPU in here, make sure that that fits properly. And yeah, realizing I said I was going to tidy up these screws a while back, and I didn't do that. Sorry. Until I got excited, carried away. So, take out this. I'm going to open this box up. Oop. Now this is the 2400G Ryzen CPU. So it uses an AM4 socket, which is the standard AMD socket outside of Threadripper, which uses, I believe, a TR4. And you can see the CPU right there. Oh, <laughs> right there. And here's the CPU cooler coming out. Sorry for any screeches from the boxes. could have used the 3400G APU, but I realized that the BIOS on this motherboard hasn't been updated yet, so it would have resulted in having to flash a new BIOS, and I just really didn't want to do that for a 7% performance increase. So we're going to put the CPU in here. You just want to lift up this little cam arm in the case and lever it this way and without touching any of the pins on the CPU you want to pick it up orient it so that there's a little golden triangle there and that might yeah that lines up with a embossed triangle on the CPU socket so now we put that in and we just lower the cam arm down and it locks it in place. So now we're gonna actually put the CPU cooler on there. And to do that, we have to remove the stock cooler mount, which is used for the lower power CPUs and APUs. And that's just four screws that you remove real quick. And you take out these plastic parts here set them off to the side. You don't really need them anymore, but it doesn't hurt to hold on to them. Unless you've got like 500 of them, in which case maybe it does hurt to hold on to them. So I'll set that off here. Set my screwdriver to the side. And while this does use thumb screws on this CPU cooler, you can't really get your thumb in there, so you're just gonna be using a screwdriver so you just want to orient this the correct way so it lines up with the mounting holes and has the wire coming out in a way that can be conducive for cable management. So it looks like we can do it this way. Yep. So I'm actually going to have it so that the cable comes down towards the bottom so that it wraps around like this and goes up to the socket for the power delivery. So we'll set this in here. And the way that you want to tighten these screws, you want to do diagonal. So you tighten this one over here a little bit, get it screwed in. Then you do this one so that you're applying even force to the whole thing. And you might have to push down a little bit. Don't be too worried if it makes any snapping noises. It's usually just the plastic adjusting. And then we do this. And it's going to make horrifying noises as the springs rub against the thumb screws here. You just kind of go. And we go this way. I'm sure we'll probably speed up through this because it's kind of boring and the noise is awful. It's my least favorite part of building a PC. And 
there we go. It's all tightened in. It's even. And we just run this cable around, like I said before. Plug it in. And, oop, it doesn't want to plug in. Oh, there we go. And with this cable, it's great. You, it's keyed, so you don't have to worry about orientation with it at all. All right, so I'm gonna use the Leatherman to tighten up the nut on this power supply connector right there. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. And we just grip around the side like that and just tighten it so that it's nice and snug and doesn't wiggle around. Put that away. All right. And now we get the joy of connecting up the front IO, which is the power button here, the light for the power button, there's a light for a hard drive and a light for system activity, I believe. So I'm going to Got that all plugged in there. I just followed the manual here and found the correct pins to plug all the cables into. And that will vary depending on which motherboard you're using. And sometimes depending on the case, there may or may not be certain options available on the case itself. Uh, so I just did a bit of cable management, not anything amazing, but moved some stuff around just so there's better airflow. It's in 3D, woo! So yeah, we've got everything in there. Uh, it should be ready to go. I just need to install Windows on it, which unfortunately we don't have a way to capture that installation. And it would be kind of boring to begin with. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm just gonna be using a USB drive to install Windows. And yeah, it should be awesome. The great thing about this motherboard is it actually supports two HDMI outputs. So you could have this output to a streaming rig, or you could even use this as a streaming rig if you had a capture card or something plugged into it. All right, so I'm gonna just put the lid on here. Just grab it and... Let's make sure it's sitting on there properly. The rubber cables from the uh, USB are kind of pushing against it, but it shouldn't cause any problems there. You just kind of shimmy them around and everything should be good. All right, so we're going to do this. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video as much as I did. And Duncan and I are actually going to go play some video games, probably fetch. So thanks again for watching. Uh, like if you liked the video, subscribe, and make sure you ring the bell notification. Uh, we actually upload videos every Monday, and please share, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. You want to play video games? Do you like Fortnite? Yeah? Okay, I thought you were a PUBG guy.